Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis and welcome back to my channel, E.D. Lewis Reviews, back with a new review. If you're new to my channel, please make sure you hit that like button, that subscribe button, and please leave a comment. And if you are not new to my channel, shame on you for not liking and, you know, subscribing. But, um, please leave a comment. I love reading those when they come through. And although I may be a little awkward in my responses, as I am in person, um... I apologize for that. It's uh, sometimes hard for me to be conversational. Though I do like to be conversational, it's just sometimes um, rough getting into it for me. So I apologize for that. All right, it's February. This is the first Febu video of February. And um, so February is kind of known as the month of romance with Valentine's and that ancient Roman holiday that kind of predates Valentine's and kind of was a precursor for it, which the name I cannot remember off the top of my head, but, um, yeah. So I am actually doing a review. This book I just finished reading recently in January, um, and it is called Dark Desires by uh, Eve Silver. It was published in 2005. It is a gothic romance with a little hint of horror. Now, traditionally, gothic romance is not often part of horror, but in this case, I'm actually going to include this as part of horror, too, because it has horror elements to it. Um, this book um, is available in both uh, Kindle, um, paperback, I don't know if there's a hardback edition, and I know there's an audible, so there may be other audio versions, too. I'm not sure. Um, I read the Kindle edition, which has the updated cover, and it's the first in a series called Dark Gothic. And for, uh, what I understand on Goodreads is that you don't have to read... Um, let me take off my glasses. You don't have to read uh, the books in order, because it looks like... I have several of the books in the series, not all of them, and yeah, they seem to follow different characters and uh, different situations. This book... Um, follows the character of Darcy Finch. She is a girl who's fallen on very hard times. She actually comes from a rich family. Her stepfather has recently died. Her mother died a long time ago, and she finds herself destitute and desperate, living on the streets in Whitechapel, till one night she comes to the uh, <clears throat> home and business of her sister, who has taken on the name of Mrs. Feather. And uh, with the little white chapel there and me mentioning that it's her home and her place of profession of business and taking on the name of Mrs. Feather, you can imagine um, what her profession is. Um, instead of subjecting her uh, younger sister to a fate like hers, she gives her the name and address of a particular Dr. Damien Cole to help her uh, have uh, better chances surviving on her own. So she finds the home of Dr. Damien Cole, who is an anatomist. He studies um, the, the human body and um, how it functions. And she soon finds that she is quite captivated and entranced by him though he holds many dark secrets, including a picture of a young girl who is long dead and still seems to hold sway over him in some mysterious manner. Not to mention, soon afterwards, the newspapers continue, uh, not continue, the newspapers start to report upon the deaths the murders of women in Whitechapel and the missing and missing body parts and organs. Um, I don't want to tell you much more than that about the plot. Um, I was a little confused when I started reading this book, actually, because it meant, you know, Whitechapel is very prominent in the book. And also there is uh, murders of, you know, women in Whitechapel. And at least one of them is a prostitute. And I was thinking, wait a minute, when does this take place? I had to go back to the beginning of the book because I had forgotten. I knew it takes, took place in the 1800s, but for some reason I was thinking 1880s because, you know, Jack the Ripper in 1888. No, it takes place in uh, the 1820s, so around 60 years 
prior to Jack the Ripper. So that kind of um, threw me off a little bit. The book has, um, it's very well written, by the way, and it has great language. It reminded me very much of Marilyn Ross at the start, and except for uh, the style is more eloquent, and it's more updated too, especially with um, kind of how the character's sensibilities are. Um, it, it does get erotic, which an, a Marilyn Ross gothic does not, uh, written in like, you know, usually written, those are written in the 60s and 70s and a few in the 80s. But this being written in the 2000s, it's more modern. It had earmarks that reminded me of um, Frankenstein, and Mary Shelley's novel is referenced in the book. And there's also a bit of Jekyll and Hyde feel to it, especially with murders at night in the dark streets of London and, you know, the time period of the 1800s, though it takes place before Jekyll and Hyde and after Frankenstein. So... Um, I thought this book was excellent, and it had a lot of eerie horror elements to it. It's not horror exactly, but you could almost count it as horror. That's why I'm putting it as a horror to video. Um, I gave this book four stars. I would definitely read more of this author, and it is, um, it got spicy. It was, uh, very romantic, and it was just a good sensational read to take you away. So, anyway, that is my review uh, first review for February, and uh, we'll see what else uh, the month brings. So, I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you here again soon, and I hope everybody has a great February. So, so yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.